cries and shouts. It's time for What's Trending. Let them know, Dallin Hall, whatever it takes. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. So many great moments culminating in two big wins for football and men's basketball, respectively, on Saturday. Jerem, let's relive the top moments with just the simple question. What were your favorite moments from those games on Saturday? There were so many, man. Uh, it was really fun. Obviously, the Ben Bywater pick six is the top moment. I mean, you could argue Jacob Robinson's stop, oh, uh, the two-point conversion, is the most important thing. But BYU's offense struggled, put up 17 points in this game. We thought Cade Finnegan was going to be the starter. Nope, went with Sol J. Maiava Peters. We were told multiple quarterbacks could play. Nope. Granted, Chase Roberts tried to throw a pass, got sacked on it. So there was at least that, that look on that play. Chase's, uh, you know, amazing quarterback rating plummets after the Baylor one pass for a touchdown. But anyway, Ben Bywater's play as the only starter still playing for BYU from the beginning of the year with the other three injured or in the transfer portal. It was a big play, and it sounded and looked like this again. Excuse me, here's Ben with Spencer. They knew they had numbers on the outside. So I knew they were going to throw it, right? It was three on two. So when they, you know, they're outnumbering us, they're going to throw that. So I knew he was going to throw it, jumped it. And as soon as I jumped, I saw the ball and then just started running. So honestly, shout out to the strength staff. I didn't really think I was that fast, but hey, we broke it. So honestly, it's been a good night. When did you know you were going to score on that play? Well, the, <laughs> hey, hey. Um, well, the quarterback tried diving on my legs. And so I just gave him a little, a little jump. And, you know, so I've been dreaming about that for a long time. And so. For it to come true, man, it was just could not be happier. That was awesome, and BYU needed it. Shout out to my uncle uh, Connell, who was in the yeah, background. Yeah, uh, great guy. Photo bombing every every uh, every sound bite there. It, that was a big play. Um, certainly, there were other big moments in the game, but BYU doesn't win this game without that. Um, oh, they needed goodness. those points. And in fact, remember the play before uh, we thought that Caleb Hayes had forced a fumble. It's a good thing it wasn't. It's a good thing because that next play, boom, BYU scores point. Yeah, great point. Uh, and Ben Bywater taking advantage. Also, the braids in his hair were a highlight for a lot of BYU fans. Okay. It's a new look. <laughs> it, it's a very new look. I think my favorite part about that play was watching Jay Hill and Kelly Papinga on the sideline. I happened to be standing very close mm -hmm. to them in that moment, and yep. they were deliberating on the Caleb Hayes play, whether it was a fumble. K-pop thought it was a fumble. Obviously, replay said otherwise, uh, but then when Ben picks that up and is running down the sideline, th those guys are like are like running with him. And I talked to Jay before the game, too, and I was like, he's like, it's going to be really tough to, like, not get involved, but purposely I'm not wearing a headset. Like, I just, I'm just observing. I'm just watching, guys. But watching Jay Hill and Kelly Papinga celebrate with those guys was a, was a lot of fun. Pretty, pretty cool to see kind of, like, those worlds converging. Like, here's the new blood and the coaching staff, but – they're looking at guys like Ben Bywater to be leaders for BYU defensively going into the Big 12. So it was fun to watch that dynamic. Yeah, and the defense was the real MVP here. We're going to talk to Soljay Maiava Peters, who needed to play a certain way, and BYU needed to run a certain offense to win this game. And, and it was enough, right? Um, but the defense was the real MVP of this game, obviously uh, highlighted by Jacob Robinson's uh, stop there. As we all thought it would be. We, we all said, we said, listen, you know what's going to happen in this game? Solche Maiava Peters is going to start, and Jacob Robinson's going to make a goal line stand play <laughs> to win. That's what we all thought. That's why we get paid the big, big bucks. No, that was great. Other things that were awesome, and we'll get to Jacob in a moment. In fact, let's just go to Jacob now. Jacob talked to you after the game about yes. what he saw in that play. And uh, it was a huge stop. It, it, listen, we're, we're in a good mood today because of that. Uh, I was actually expecting a slam from the one. Um, they ended up uh, having to run. I think uh, backside defense is great. So the quarterback tried to scam. When Mikey went inside and forced him out to me, and then they did the play. You know it's the quarterback and you for the game. What's, what's going through your mind at that point? I was like, got to get him down. No matter how I do it, but I got him down humble jacob robinson he's just so soft-spoken plays loud yeah he's, sure. he's light his thing's speed 
his thing is not pounds. His Jared. thing isn't come up uh, and make a one-on-one tackle at, near up, the goal line. He gave up 50 pounds to the SMU quarterback. Yeah, I 215 was, on 165. I was impressed by what Ed Lamb would call contact courage at the goal line. That was a great play, and it saves, um, you know, kind of the end of the season. BYU wins four in a row. They get to eight wins. I love eight wins in a down year because we expected nine-plus for this group. Only one or two games off the pace. But, yeah, it, it, it was a nice finish yes. to the year. It How was really it? nice to finish with. Like, like we talk about these dramatic end-of-game finished up. Like, you put the Jacob Robinson play in with those great bowl finishes with BYU. I know it's 7-5 and five BYU at the time. I know it's New Mexico Bowl. But you put it in there somewhere in the top 10, you know, bowl finishes in BYU history of, yeah, this two-point conversion was done. Another dramatic bowl great. finish. I love it. Six and a half weeks ago, you and I are sitting here in Studio B and thinking, Man, is BYU going to be bowl eligible? Yeah, at four and five, it was in question. Before the Boise State game, thinking, okay, can BYU string together a win against Utah Tech and maybe Stanford? Like, Boise State, they're a clear underdog. They win four and they go eight and five. Really nice finish. I mean, very, very – and Kalani had said it. He's like, we want to win every game. We want to go eight and five so that we can, you know, put October away. We can have – a no loss November and go and win a bowl game and oh you brought it up again though. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, was it was in football it was in football it was in football and he was talking specifically to football but uh, yeah the realists you know in this studio and I know that you are more that direction than I am here but both paid by Brigham though even I was thinking man like just get to six and six and get to a bowl game right yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, very, very few outside of the team are thinking, oh, after you go winless in October, you're going to win the rest of the games and go 8-5. and five. But that's exactly what they did. It was 2014 again, which you brought up um, several weeks ago. Okay, in basketball, Rudy Williams. It's 26 against Creighton. It's 26 against Utah now. He is the benchmark. He's the sixth man of the year. He's discovered something. And uh, we'll talk to Mark Pope in, in uh, the next segment about what it is with Rudy that's different. But I talked to him after the game. And, uh, yeah, what, what went right against Utah? I feel like it was the little things, you know, diving on the floor, 50-50 balls, you know, second chance points, offensive rebounds, stuff like that. In a rivalry matchup like this that you have come into in this game, what did it feel like in this gym for this special moment against the Utes? Uh, I feel like me and the guys, we had a a little bit of extra juice. You know, obviously everybody knows how big of a deal this is. Um, You know, we're also trying to get better along with that. But, you know, this game meant a little bit more to us. He gets it. He gets it. And he was awesome in this game. BYU really needed him. It started with Foose initially scoring the first 10, including that crazy tip in. And and Rudy was good uh, offensively. 26 points really needed that performance in this game. It gets a really good defensive team in Utah who was top 10 in two-point percentage defense, three-point percentage defense, effective field goal percentage defense, top 30 in efficiency defensively. BYU looked like the better team the whole game. I mean, it was, it was wild to see the team that lost to UVU in South Dakota has now beaten Creighton and Utah. Are those teams sort of overrated and where they were when BYU played the game? Yeah, but I don't care when you just say you get wins over Creighton and Utah regardless of what their net is or ranking or whatever. Always good wins, and BYU's getting better, which is the goal. You jumped 35 spots in the net rankings by beating Utah. I think BYU went from 178 to 143, and that fluctuates by the day. Yeah. You know, they, they could be... Uh, need, definitely need to climb in the top 80 to make the NIT. Yeah, to, to um, feel comfortable with that for sure. And this is where BYU's headed is. Just get better. Maybe you get crazy good in March. I don't know, but this team needs to make at least the NIT. Now, we're watching the, the finale of the basketball game on the frigid sidelines of University Stadium in Albuquerque. And Rudy's, you know, that clutch floater in the lane where he's got the Euro step. And he hit, like, the biggest shot of the game to me, as, as big as Dallin's was, the biggest shot of the game to me was Rudy to the elbow when it was a three-point game late. And he knocks down calmly this 15-foot jumper that kind of just smoothed things out a little bit because Utah's making this dramatic run back. I think it was 61-58 at that point. And he hits that jumper, and it's like, okay, we're good. We're good. And that's what you want. That's what BYU brought Rudy Williams in to do was to hit those big shots in key moments and be the veteran leader for a very young team. So he does that. Then he hits the Euro. And then, of course, Dallin, I mean, that's the punctuation. Dallin's saving his best field goals for the last. Because against Creighton, he's not making a lot of shots. I think two in both. 
Um, but he's making big shots. Yeah, it was awesome. I want to go back to the bowl game. And by the way, <laughs> let's just, hop around. It was I, great. I have to point out that during the two point conversion, Mason Wake is like on IG Live. <laughs> <laughs> he gets, so there are several players that have their phones out on the side. It's much more relaxed atmosphere. <laughs> he's on IG yeah. Live. All these guys are not playing like it. So he's like filming himself and like running down the sideline. And I'm like, your team's got one play to win this game. And he's like, oh, here we go. You know, I loved it. I just, it was surprised so, it wasn't on Coop Connect. So unique. So Mason Wake's doing that on his phone. Harris Lachance is in all the huddles, and he's got his phone. He's doing selfies. Oh and God. they're taking pictures of Soljay Mayava. You know, like, <laughs> it was just <laughs> dorking around. <laughs> it was very, very different. Um, but ultimately, we're smiling because BYU wins that game. We talked about the turning point before the Boise game. BYU wins that, and then they get on the streak to, to win four games to close out the season. And so naturally, I had to ask Kalani after the game, like, how do you – sum up the season so here's part of that conversation yeah adversity overcoming adversity learning and growing and becoming better even through all of it um staying as positive as possible uh that's just the same thing in life you know so um not 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 all of it went the way that we, we wanted it to but um just really proud that the guys stuck together kept believing uh, never wavered in their faith in each other in the program and and um you know, i'm really happy we got the win to just kind of you know, just confirm it at the end there. Eight and five. So over the last three seasons combined, Kalani Sataki led teams 29 and nine. Really good. It's good ball. And, and this was a step backwards from expectations, certainly. But I've always said eight, you are good plus, right? You are, there's no bad teams who win eight games. Like, BYU eight ran out, 13, out dudes and I was like, I can't believe these guys are playing. Yes, this, this was the wounded warriors out there for BYU. And it was, it was uh, tough. And BYU made SMU's offense look pedestrian. Yeah, They're the really good. The defense was solid. By the way, notable injuries on that last drive for SMU. T two of the top receivers, the running back can barely walk. And so they have to call a quarterback draw, and they make a play. Hey. It just all that. Sometimes you get a break, right? And BYU got a break, which is great. Ryan Kalfrenner doesn't play for Grant. Mm, we'll take advantage. Unsung Let's go. Unsung heroes, Jerem. Ben Bywater, Jacob Robinson, Sol J. Mayava. By the way, some of his teammates are calling him Bol J. Mayava now. Bol J. Mayava. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 